It seems to be a rule of thumb that the rougher a road is on your way to a canoe trip, the better that trip will be. This trip would be no exception. After a long and bumpy road, we would eventually find ourselves on the shore of beautiful Lake Tomogamy. With a late start on a big lake, with a southern wind making travel fairly difficult, it was going to be a short paddling day for me and my trusty pup, Miss Betty Lou. Ready to roll? It's always a great feeling being back in the wilderness on another canoe trip. Setting up camp and making dinner is second nature, but it's still rewarding to set up your home for the night. Okay. Funny how you come over when there's food, eh? Yes. I was particularly excited for what the next few days would bring. This tobogamy was a place I had not explored much, and the route I had chosen would see us travel through a series of awe-inspiring waterfalls. With a stiff breeze to start the day, I wasn't sure how far we could paddle, but I was excited to get back on the water. still early, but I don't know uh, how strong this wind is going to be out on out on Diamond Lake. It's definitely it's definitely slow when you're by yourself, and this canoe is not particularly fast either. It's it's a uh, it's a white water canoe, which is great in white water, and it's great on big lakes too when it's really wavy. Like it, it's. It's such a full canoe that it just rides over everything, but she's not a speed demon, that's for sure. And it doesn't track the... Oh, here's the wind. That's nice. That is nice.
that was a really good day today. We we didn't uh, make we didn't cover that much ground today, but you know what? Considering we had a fairly heavy headwind all day, that was that was pretty good. And we're on uh, Lady Evelyn right now. And um, tomorrow we're gonna hopefully uh, maybe get to the first kind of couple waterfalls. I'll grab the map in a second and, and uh, I'll, I'll show you the route or I'll talk about the route. But yeah, good day, good day. So that's where I camped uh, last night and then I, I paddled across here and worked my way up. That's the uh, portage where it says Jack Ladder there into Diamond Lake, which was nice and um, that was pretty straightforward, very easy. And then uh, continued up here, there's another portage here, which I did, which I believe is called Lady Evelyn Falls, maybe, even though it's really just a tiny little drop off. Maybe in the spring it's, uh, it's really moving. And I'm just camped in this little bay here. So hopefully tomorrow I'll work my way up and uh, work my way over to these portages here. There's one, two, and then I'm in uh, Willow Island Lake, which I can then take up and then and then start my way kind of down the uh, Lady Evelyn River, the North Channel. So see these falls, Center Falls, Helen Falls. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Should be should be really cool. We'll see how far I get tomorrow. Nice little, uh, nice little smallie. We've made it to the first portage. I think. I think I can see it just up there. Looks like an opening in the bush, anyways. As I approached the first waterfall, I honestly didn't expect much. Maybe because it was on an easy access lake, but man, was it ever beautiful.
dinner is ready. Just talking to this uh, gentleman who just did the portage down to the next falls. Um, he said it's twice the size. So I'm pretty excited about that. Because I thought this one was freaking huge. And if the next one's twice as big, that's pretty awesome. So he said he comes in here, he's been here every year the last eight years and does a lot of photography and stuff. And I can certainly see why, because this is a pretty amazing spot. And there's hardly anyone here. Amazing. Okay, a couple minutes of casting, a little, uh, little small mouth bass. We'll get this guy back in the water right away, but kind of cool. Just sitting here at the waterfall here with Miss Lou, and we're just gonna try and take some pictures, do some long exposure stuff to get that kind of I don't know, whatever they call that when the water looks like it's all flowy and all that. So, we'll try that out, see how it goes, and uh, I'll post some pictures here in a second. And maybe if we're real lucky, we can do some long exposure if the stars come out tonight. It looks like it maybe. The sky uh, will uh, clear up a little bit here. If we can do some long exposure, get the stars and the waterfall, I don't know. Might be, might, might be kind of aggressive, but we'll see. We'll see if we can make it work. morning of day three, I was debating what to do. The forecast was calling for a crazy amount of rain and high winds. With limited campsites ahead and the idea of completing extremely steep, slippery portages in mind, I decided to stay put at my amazing waterfall site and wait for some better weather before pressing on. I would soon find out that I made the right decision. Keep getting these fairly extreme gusts of wind. It actually just blew the, uh, well, it kind of knocked the tarp over. Actually, one of the line locks uh, started to slip, which doesn't happen very often. But, anyways, I've just put the canoe kind of as a wind block against the bug shelter there. So, that's something I don't do a whole lot of, but it's definitely handy to use your canoe as part of your tarp set up it can it can really make a big difference when you get some driving rain but we'll see hopefully hopefully uh, nothing crazy happens here but it's it is really blowing right now other thing other thing you can use uh, if you're in a pinch is you can use literally I think I've used probably every piece of camp gear I bring to kind of batten down the hatches for, uh, for tarp. But you can use, I always have carabiners and stuff on the, the canoe barrel. And you can move them around. That should keep any wind from getting underneath the tarp here. It, sh it should help.
coming down now. And there's thunder and lightning. So I think I made the right decision to stay here. I'm, I'm glad I did. a long, wet day huddled underneath the tarp, the storm would finally pass. With nice weather in the forecast, I could not wait to see what lay beyond this waterfall the following day. Okay, good morning guys. It is an absolutely gorgeous morning, day five I think it is. Uh, we just did the first portage uh, through Frank's Falls there. Um, nice, beautiful portage. That's where I camped the last couple nights, it's just kind of at the top of that. Uh, we're on our way to the next set of falls, which is supposed to be absolutely beautiful and I'm really excited to check it out so it's not very far maybe I don't even think it's two kilometer paddle from from this one Not sure what it is about water falling from a rock that seems so amazing, but it's always hard to leave these special places.
All right. Oh, there's one I didn't see. Lots of little bit of blue, blue paint there, Betty Lou. Right? This place is insane. Like this, this waterfall is just as beautiful as the last couple. It's it's insane. I cannot. Uh, I don't know if this route is in Kevin Bland's top 50 theories, but if it's not, I think it should be. I'm putting a request in an extra vision of this route in there. Although maybe don't because it's kind of nice. It's quiet. I I yeah actually you know what? it's kind of a crappy route. I wouldn't bother coming here. <laughs> you think I, you think there's a bear around? Every time I make loud noise in the bush, Betty starts looking around for bears. Hey? Eh? After traveling through some of the most beautiful terrain Ontario has to offer, I was ready to relax at camp and enjoy a warm, calm, late summer evening. Morning, Lou. Get those grubby little mitts off me, eh? Get down, beast. Down. Oh, get down. Go on. Get. Get. Okay, guys. Morning of day. I think we're on day six. I'm pretty sure. Worst per. Worst part of every morning here is putting on your wet shoes from the day before and your wet socks. We'll go ahead here. We'll... Oh, who's that tough girl? 
Hey, who's that tough girl? Get you. You're not helping here, Lou. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Beat it. Yes, you're making a mess. You're making a mess. Right on. First portage skipped. Sweet. And I think that's where it comes out, right beside me. Um, definitely not hard. It was just hard because you couldn't really paddle in some sections where you kind of wanted to redirect your canoe and it's really shallow, a couple spots, but hey, we got through that, no problem, Lou. So I'm just going to take a second here, check the map again. Um, I'll just pull off to the side actually. There's a little bit of wind and a little bit of current. And there are some falls, so I don't need any of that. So that's, I don't know if that'll show up, that's the one we just went through. Okay, so the next one, so it must be a falls or a dam or something. And we gotta go on the right side, so Portage should be somewhere, somewhere just over there. Wilson's Lodge. Okay, so this is Hap Wilson's Eco Lodge, I guess. There's a waterfall right there, Cabin Falls. And then the portage is right over here.
at this tree here. There's like a birch and a cedar. They're almost like conjoined. It's, I've, we've got the birch tree that's hanging down here. And then up here, up out so well, you can see the cedar bark, right? Very cool. I bet you that's been there a long time. So we're just at the next portage and this one takes us into Bridal Veil Falls. It's literally like paddle for 30 seconds, portage, paddle for 30 seconds, portage, just over and over and over and over and over again. So um, anyways, yeah, next portage, 450 meters and then Bridal Veil Falls, which I think should be big. I don't know. Sounds cool. Anyways, let's go check it out. This place is insane. Crazy. Is that not an absolutely gorgeous brook trout? Look at that guy. Incredible, like just another amazing view down the fall. So we'll do this portage, we'll check it out from the other side. I have no idea 
if this camera will do justice to how steep this is, but I literally feel like a mountain goat portaging. Well, that's just another seriously impressive waterfall. This place, I tell ya. Hey Lou, I tell ya. Okay, Lou, up, up, one, two, three, off. Hey, nice work, Lou. completed the river section of the trip. It had truly been a pleasure to paddle that amazing stretch of water. It was time to find camp and cook up a fresh catch to end the day. Look at this chunk. It's a pretty big bass. I'd say that's probably, I don't know, four or five pounds anyways.
The final day of this trip would begin with a short paddle to a portage where I would run into one of the few paddlers I would see on this trip. 16 day trip. This is day 16. We're just trying to get dry, stay, stay alive. And right on, man. And, and I got to get a close up here. You did it in your off road slippers. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at yeah, those. Yeah, that's, that's what I wore the whole time. Look they broke, those. so I had to connect it up there. They're a bit too big. That too. is perfect. And you got the four wheel <laughs> drive engaged with the, the back. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> Good stuff. That was Big awesome, love. man. It was nice to meet you yeah, and, nice to and meet enjoy you the rest of your trip, brother. Big cheers. You too. After chatting with him about his amazing trip, it was time to get back on the trail. As we were making our way out of this beautiful park on a warm summer's day, it's hard not to feel extremely lucky to have places like this to freely explore. The feeling of paddling a canoe on lakes, rivers, and creeks, portaging through the bush and up the sides of waterfalls is a feeling like no other. There's a famous quote from Sigurd Olson that really hits home and I'm sure resonates with many canoeists. Life is good to those who know how to live. I do not ever hope to accumulate great funds or worldly wealth, but I shall accumulate something far more valuable, a store of wonderful memories. When I reach the twilight of life, I shall look back and say, I'm glad I lived as I did. Life has been good to me.